you got to show off this new T-shirt. Though. Yeah, this is a dude. That thing is legit. It is I like badass. that. Charles, you got a good shot yeah. of that. Look at that thing, dude. Cute professional. I love it, man. It's in the BRCs on the. That's BRCC so awesome. We got to be careful though, because I swear I feel like YouTube picks up a silhouette of an AR. Like every single time we Old post, shadow. like yeah. yeah, every time we post, you know, just pig hunting, safety, yep. everything's safe and, and everything, and it seems like we get shadow banned. That's I mean, crazy. We're in a crazy day and age, aren't we? James <laughs> Watson. By the way, <laughs> thank you for coming out, dude. Like we're oh. here again, uh, hanging out with at Bass Pro this week, and you're a, a, a Springfield, Missouri guy. Yeah. You grew up in the area. You you're bet. on Table Rock. You're building an awesome house here on Table Rock, and uh, we spent a lot of time there. Like, you have, yeah, yeah. A lot of people catching don't tarantulas. Know. Yes, tarantulas. <laughs> Uh, long pinchered crawfish yes. and crawfish boiling. We a, man, we had the best crawfish uh-huh. boil ever. It it's, feels like forever ago. It yeah. w- that's because it was. It was. It <laughs> yeah, was. It was a long. When was that? Is that when I won? Uh, it was it one was of it the year? times maybe maybe year we, after that we'd have to go into your garage where you currently live and see. And you talk about it all the time, uh, you know, all the signatures yes. in the garage, in the bathroom there, of all the anglers who have stayed at your awesome place here on Table Rock yeah. Lake. I'm sure we dated it, signed and dated it. but It's still uh, there. Yeah, that's amazing. And I've got families that rent my place on the nightly rental program. Oh, they do. Now, they, they, I got blocked they for them to it. sign it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's cool. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, another thing people didn't really know, uh, James Watson was in Trait and I's wedding. So, yeah. Um, and that Vegas. Was, that, was yeah. That that was yeah. in, back in in 2015. So we yeah. go out. We go back a couple of years before that. Yeah, so, well before that. Yeah. yeah. So here we are, years <laughs> and years and years later. And by the way, when James walked into uh, into the, he walked right through the door. The first thing he says is, "Where's Nebo?" <laughs> and Nebo's our little dog, and he's got biscuit, of course. Yep. They're so easy to love. Those I little know. things, aren't they? Nebo just looks up at you. Yeah. And is like, How? You <laughs> better love me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get your ass out of here, yeah. Nebo. <laughs> you should see him these days, dude. He's like. An old dude, and is he, he? Dem- oh, you think yeah. he demanded it. Now yeah. it's yeah. like worse. Does he? Does he walk around with it like his tongue hanging out? Like, <laughs> not, oh. not quite yet. Okay. He still has his teeth. Okay, once good. He starts losing his he, teeth. He, he is losing his teeth. Yeah. yeah. And now, did, 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 does your audience know how you guys got Nebo? Uh, I don't think they do. No. That's an interesting story. So yeah, just real is. quick, tell us how it Nebo is. come into your life. So if you guys Google uh, Mount Nebo State Park in, in Arkansas, uh, Lake Dardanelle, Arkansas, yep. uh, I think it was 2013, 2014, um, this little dude, this little... Scraggly the, yes, looking mug. Oh, you remember. Like, yep. you remember the, those days, and, and uh, we were staying at a little cabin at the base of Mount Nebo State Park, and... I was. I remember I was doing tackle. I had a 2006 Ford F250. My door was open, and I was doing tackle. She was in the cabin, and this dog literally came out of the woods, full of ticks, skin, nasty, nasty dog. I mean, 14 pounds, 13 pounds, whatever. He wasn't. No, he was like 11 pounds. Yeah, he, he was. Yeah. He was in rough shape. He ho- yeah, yeah, he hopped in my truck. And looking he was just sniffing around looking for food, just yes. looking for food. I'm like, this little dude, <laughs> yeah. this little guy. So I stopped doing tackle, and I just, like, kind of walked him over to the to the cabin there and opened up the door. I said, Trey, look at this thing. And, and like, upon further inspection, we started looking closer, dude, and he was in bad yeah. shape, yeah. bro. And yeah. uh, we just we couldn't leave him, so we ended up keeping him and called him uh, Nebo. Now, awesome. now he's living the best oh, life yeah. ever. Yeah, he's ever. a bad boy he's now. He's king. Spoiled. Yeah. Beyond. So, so, you got to do what he says. So yeah. he was 11 pounds then, right? He's 19.2 pounds yeah. now. Yeah. And he wasn't Proud a puppy. <laughs> Fat and sassy. Yeah. 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 yeah, proud of it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wish but, he was here. Yeah. I want to introduce biscuits out in the truck. Yeah, oh, I did, well, I didn't know your pet policy in your in your rental here, so oh, I was what? like, well, that we have one. That's yeah. why. Yeah, that's why the dogs aren't here. Yeah, I wish I'd known so. that. So, yeah. well, the real estate around here. So, a lot of people don't know. Um, you know, in the days, this is like podcasts, like the time of podcasts and everything. You've been on a lot of them oh, lately. Yeah. You really yeah. have. Oh yeah. Caused quite a stir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, caused quite am a I st- paying for that? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did, have you gotten in trouble? Oh yeah. Like big trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't talk about it. I just can't talk about it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> there it's, uh. No yeah, kidding. I'm paying for it. Wow. So. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. So, do I, you want to pay some more? Cause no, 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 we I don't, don't want. Yeah. I don't want to pay any more. No. Wow. Just wow. you know, you, you nowadays you just you're just well better off. Just put your head down and yeah. go fishing. Yeah, yeah. The general public wants you to do that. 
But you guys know this. This is a business. Yes. Right, yeah. And and you, we have to monetize and maximize all of our time on the water, off the water, yeah. and yeah. so on and so forth. And we got to make good business decisions. decisions. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, I love fishing. Fishing was a good business decision for me. Yeah. And I've always been able to catch enough to just stay in business. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, how much money do you make if you stay in business? Well, I found out a way to make good money yep. doing yeah. it. Yep. As long as you stay in business. Stay in business. Yeah. I'm going to stay in business. Yeah. Wow. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> I'm stay in business. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I, I, uh, one of the first, uh, I think, tournaments I've seen you at was one of the fish and chips tournaments way, way, way back oh, in my Grand gosh. Lake. I mean, I'll never forget. Like you had the same type of jeans on. Like you guys, like you guys from the Ozarks have those same type of jeans, boot cut, like designer jeans. You had a collared shirt. You had your hair like rascal, yeah. rascal flats, and you would Fat call rascal. yourself Fat Rascal. I remember you just every single room you'd be in, whether it's, it was the poker room down there at the casino, we're having drinks at the bar, whatever it was. Like you would light up every room, mm-hmm. and like, and I'm sure from that point, that must have been 13, 14 years ago. Um, like you literally, it's like the center of attention and <laughs> you enjoy that. And I know oh, yeah. you do, right? Yeah. I mean, center of attention. And it seems like from that point on up until this point here, like uh, it's, it's, uh, it's contagious. It's attractive. Yeah. Not only to sponsors, but fans, yeah. like people love seeing James Watson, Dude, that I rascal. I want to have a good time. Yeah. I want people around me to have a good time. Yeah. I like to embrace people. I want, I want everybody to love life as much as I do mm-hmm. in and uh, it maybe if they're not loving life as much as I'm loving it, <laughs> and sometimes I have to fake it, just yeah. like everybody else. Yeah, true. but uh, I just want I want everybody around me to be successful. Yeah, I mean my real estate bo- uh, office is that way. You know, I've been out of that ten. This is the longest job, full time job I've ever had in my entire life is professional bass fishing. Wow. February of 2013 is when I quit real estate and started fishing full time. Wow, full time, full time. When you say you quit real estate, what do you mean by that? Because you retired. still have a firm, though, I right? do. Yeah. yeah. But yep. you don't actually physically you don't, do it You don't yourself. run a gun. Nope. Re- yeah. yeah. Nope. I, uh, I got great partner, mm-hmm. uh, Dave and Jen Holbrook. Uh, we were in the Army together. We didn't serve oh, wow. w- with each other. Or same time frame. Mm-hmm. He was an engineer. Sold him a few houses when they came and went from Fort Leonard Wood. That's how we knew him. And uh, <clears throat> in 2007, he was retiring. And they were thinking about going back to Kentucky to retire. And uh, I said, guys, uh, got to go back. Well, we got family there. I said, well, I said, you want to make some money? Mm-hmm. Oh, we like to make money. And I was like, Holbrook, you do great selling houses. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I sent him over. And I seriously sent him in the shittiest office I had. Yeah. is like, was it in the corner? And it had the furnace in it. Yeah. And it was, and it was a desk right next to the Here furnace. In, I said, Springfield? No, Fort Leonard Wood. Oh, Fort, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Up, uh, up near Waynesville, Missouri. Yeah. And uh, I sent him in there and I said, here's a contract. Here's a listing contract. Here's sales contract. Here's how you do it. We'll go riding around. And I threw it at him and put him in that office. He figured <laughs> and it and out. And he stuck with you. Oh, yeah. Wow. And he tore it up. No kidding. And I was like, this guy's so, better at it than me. And uh, I'll see you later. And a few years, like I said, like six years later, I asked him if he uh, if uh, he'd like to be partners. And he goes, well, I don't want to I don't want I don't want to write you a check for half of your business. Uh, he's a big Dave Ramsey guy. Okay. Uh, yeah. He didn't operate on debt. Yep. And I said, well, I said, how about we do this instead? How about you just send me half the money and you can own this other half yep. and we'll call it good. Yeah. And we've been 50, 50, not 50, 149. We've been 50, 50 partners, partners. Right down the middle. since February, 2013. And I've not had to, you all only get consulted with, uh, when they need to consult about big decisions and so on and so hmm. forth. And I'm not lost one second of sleep or worry yeah. because my par- I trust my partners 100. percent So you don't have to step rare. in. Yeah. No, no, not you don't one have to bit. step in and do no. any management. Manage- it's his. Yeah, it's his. And what I learned in the army too is once you relinquish command mm-hmm. and you've given that authority to somebody else and you trusted and you've handed that guide on to the next commander yeah. or right. the next R major. 
you you're you're done. You've handed that over, and if you, you don't have trust, no more say. Well, you have all the say. You, st- I still have say, but don't ever ho- hand over command to somebody you don't, don't fully trust. trust. Yeah, one hundred percent. Could you imagine if the whole world operated like that? You know, I mean, that everything would just be the fishing perfect. World? Oh, for the fishing world, yeah, but, yeah. Better decisions <laughs> would be made. Wow, <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine? Yeah, that I seat mean, you're sitting in right now, this seat I'm sitting yeah. in, the seat she's sitting in, would be worth a whole lot more money if, that, if that was the way things were managed. Yeah. We had a, uh, you know, truth be told, we had uh, Randy Blockett. I don't know when this podcast will air compared to his, but we had Randy sitting right there, and and uh, you know, we hit some, we hit some pretty, yep. pretty hard points there on on the way. Yep. You know, bass fishing is. We had Mike McClellan in that seat as well. Two two old school old, and veterans, that's what, exactly. Lots of and that's why yes. we wanted to give him the time as yep. well as yep. yours on the podcast because. Where are we at 2023 professional bass fishing? Some of these guys are I, just today. I was just looking at a social media post today where some guys are saying, don't worry about it, guys. The bass fishing industry is tip top. I don't buy all this negativity and this and that. Does you it seem that. like there's a, you don't have to look very far on Instagram to see. Um, uh-huh. But does it seem like, you know, uh, you know, does it seem like there's more negativity in the sport of bass fishing in 2023 than any other year? Absolutely. Absolutely, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's, a, num- run and it's a number of things. But yeah. there's a, but there's legit I feel like there's legitimate reasons Valid, for people negative, to Yeah. Not necessarily negative, but like Okay, issues. there are problems, issues. and let's talk about it, yeah. because yeah. for so many years, we all act like Under everything's perfect, Under everything's the rug. perfect, yeah. and now people are starting to talk about it, yeah. and my, I have a problem with people who call talking about things negative. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of people who do good, a lot of good, well put, well yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, who yeah. do a lot of crap Just behind talking. the scenes. Mm-hmm. But but it, they but if anyone talks about it publicly, that's negative to them. And it's like that's not negative. That's, that's real life situations. That's, that, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's that's for you to make an assessment right. on what we're the current con- status conversing yeah. about. Yeah. yeah, yes, exactly. Now, if you want rainbows lollipops fuzzy puppies go talk that shit somewhere else yeah. exactly that, it ain't this it. our business is just as real and has the same issues as any other business, business. out there yep. exactly life period period has issues period we, i feel like this social media bs of making everything look perfect yeah like people think that that's positivity. I think that's more toxic than anything. The yep. people who do that. We were just listening to a podcast with Evan Hafer, who is mm-hmm. Black Rifle, yep. and Mike Glover, and uh, someone else. And and I, I'm gonna still post this um, this segment because he talks about the problem in this world and society are the people who have these perfect uh, Instagrams and social media and are putting this perfect facade. Mm-hmm facade out there yeah. because it's fake that's what's toxic. yeah because this perfect facade that they live mm-hmm. is something that whoever a lot of people are watching fake. have to they want to emulate that yes. and say why can't my life be as perfect as that and there's no yeah. substance to no, that either right. no, there's right. no substance to what you're putting out there yeah. you're not helping yeah. them get along in life make the right decisions you're not giving them something to aspire yep. to you're because it's all fake yeah, there's there's it's ma- almost materialistic yep. to an extent. Yeah, that's why when you talk to your high school kids, I know you do a lot of work with high oh, yeah. school kids. You're supposed and to be youth. with them tonight. Sorry about that. That's, yeah. or college. that's college guys. That, college, yeah, yeah, that was a jury high school yeah. or jury college. Jury. That's why when you're face to face with them back when you were uh, army staff sergeant, yep. when you're face to face with these kids or the youth, it's not through a cell phone where they see it one dimensionally. They only see a smiling and getting along and, or whatever, yeah. you know, this is like real one-on-one yeah. talk. And, and that, that is a lot heavier of an impact in my opinion than, yeah. than that damn cell phone right I, there. I agree. I agree. And, uh, it's funny. You talk about the, the high school deal. I, I was at a by state, uh, deal in St. Louis Saturday and did a high school deal for about six hours. And there's about 150 kids. And, it's amazing the shift in what's going on out there. And it's like, so I, I, I popped a question at these kids. It's like, 
hey, how many of you follow tournament fishing? Mm-hmm. And we're talking like 18 to 20 kids in every class. Uh-huh. Maybe four of them yeah. would raise their hand. Hey, how many of you know who I am? Maybe two. Hey, how many of you know who Jacob Wheeler is? Maybe four. Wow. You know, it's it's amazing. And I'm like, wait, this is what? a high school fishing team? Yes. Wow. Yes. And wow. I'm like, mm-hmm. bro, how many of you gather all your information and watch uh, influencers on YouTube? <laughs> yep. All of them. Yep. Big. Makes me. If you re- ain't seen it, it's coming. Yep. It's happening. The shit so does is that, right now. Does yeah. that make you? Uh, this is something I want to talk to you about. Um, does that not make you want to do the YouTube thing? Sure. Because you've got sure, just, your personality is everything, right? Mm-hmm. You don't necessarily catch them. You catch them better Bro, than just burning. <laughs> 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 No, oh, barely enough. No, I gonna well, I did. I all, did admit he's won I, more tournaments than me. He's won way more tournaments I than me. Know, you didn't let me finish yeah. my spirits. <laughs> yeah. Your wife's not mine. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> What's for dinner? <laughs> Get your own food, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> No. Charles is laughing because he sees it. <laughs> uh, Sorry, Trace. Okay, I wasn't saying it like that. <laughs> I'm saying you had a top 10 this year uh, at Murray. Yeah. I'm saying that, though, you're not necessarily like, you know, three top 10s a year, no, four top 10s. I'm barely a year. surviving. Right. But and I, my whole career has been barely surviving. But your personality, yeah. especially like back when we go back to the selects, I feel like. You know, on FLW, we all know your personality, yeah. but I don't think you ever got to like shine. Yeah. But then that that table was it Table Rock when Center Hill when on spoon mm-hmm. the spoon mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's when you really like yeah. people. Are oh, like, it was yeah. and 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 I I I give Major League Fish and that platform and that opportunity. Yeah. 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 I give them all the credit in the world right. for that oppor- well, opportunity. Well, it was your personality though, yeah. that people finally got to see, yeah. but. You could be showing your personality every dadgum day on you YouTube. Bet. And I'll answer, and I think you had a question about that. It's just another, it's just another thing to put on your list of things to do yeah. for that yeah. day. Yeah, right. No yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you ever think, though, okay, look, for not to be doom and gloom, but let's say you go the next two years, like eventually. I'm going make- to stop you there. I'm only doing this one more year. Wow. Then you're done. I'm done. I'm done. Really? Unless I have some stellar breakout year on Major League Fishing, they're busting the field to 66. Uh-huh. James Watson ain't in that field. I have to have a breakout year. So this is done. You can you can slap a, or this is my retirement year going out, year wow. 11, whatever you want on it. But I'm unless I finish in top 10 angler of the year points, I will not be here. In 2020, is that what it is? Y'all have to. I have to. Yeah, I'm sitting at 61 right now, overall out of 80. And you and they're cutting. They'll take the top 35 to start next year. Yeah, and bringing in five, so that's 40. Mm -hmm. What about the other 20? It might be the top 45. You know what? My head spins. Yeah. You know why? Yeah, I know. Because I'll go, I'll, I'll open up my email. And there'll be a change. Yeah. Now I'm just saying, I, I don't, I don't you know how to keep compute. up with par it. I cannot. The, par for that course, man. What, I, I mean, I could, but what am I going to take off my list today yeah. right. to read and understand? Right. Yeah. And shame on me. So, so and, the, that's and, what confuses me. I love you, James. I really do. And your personality, I think, is like, that's best. you, Top you two. know, like, well, thank you. And, and I think that you, in the five years you've been over there, I think that your brand has not prospered like it should, in my opinion. And so that's what confuses me. Why sign up for another <clears throat> year when I think with the right people and the right partnerships endemically mm-hmm. that you could do some things in fishing that are way more valuable. And just if, if that year's going away, like, you bet. You know, like, why can't we get to work now on that stuff? Well, thank you. And I think I got an answer for that. I still feel like, personally feel like I have to have the highest platform. You guys know how hard oh, yeah. it is to get, to get there. to yeah. this platform. Yeah. 
But I, but I it's think fair. that it's, I think it's shifting gears that I'm agreeing with mm-hmm. you. Yeah, I think that your platform could be higher than the one you think is high right now. I, and I appreciate that. And over the last four or five months, mm-hmm. regardless of what I did to myself and what what's taking place. Last four or five months, I've had numerous anglers. Mm-hmm. Jason Reyes, you know yeah, Reyes. Yeah, yeah. We Reyes, just talked about him. Yeah, Reyes yeah. called me out of the blue. Hadn't talked to him in months, wow. maybe even a year. Called me out of the blue, n- not too long ago. This is before Luke's, even before Luke's Luke, podcast, yeah. and says, "Hey, I just want to let you know, um, you could do just fine just doing your thing. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter where you go or yeah. what you do. You wouldn't lose your sponsorships. Yeah. I, I personally." From a branding and what I what I do on the business side, yeah. I could have a field day with you, and I think that your sponsorships could get better. Yeah, I I really think that um, where you're at personally is holding you back from doing what you could do for your brand. Yeah, I think you're honestly you waste your time over there. Well, I appreciate you got that. One year though, I mean, you yeah. got one more year. And yeah, then you go I'm, from I'm there. just saying though, you well, know, like yeah. when it what? comes to tournament fishing, yeah, you know the tournaments I really like to fish, Toyotas. Yeah, yeah. A they're lot of people days. say that. Yeah. yeah. They're three days. In and out. And you Boom. love to fish around here too. They're around you know? here. Yeah. And, and and I've never won a, a four day or a twelve day tournament. <laughs> 12 whatever days. however many days it takes. <laughs> or, you know. I've never won one of those, right. but I've won numerous three day sure. a- events. Uh you know, I like I like the uh let's face it, the caliber of fishermen you fish against on Toyota are no lesser than the caliber no. of no. fishermen we Not fish against on tour. Nope. So I, I'd, I'd take great pleasure of winning the Toyota just as much as Absolutely. I would a tour event. It'd just be, what, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 less in yep. winnings. But it's also 30 or 40% or 50% cheaper on when it comes to if the If you do the percentage, fees. it's yeah. better, yeah. you know? But yeah, if but- we if we honestly put, a, and we 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 promote bass fishing as a whole to high school and college kids and so on and so forth because we want them to enjoy it as much as we did. But if we ever sit down on pen and, and a lot of people pin to paper things and put a pencil to it's scary, it is scary. I mean, Randy Randy probably talked about it maybe in your podcast, mm-hmm. but you know he's a big pen to paper guy oh, yeah. and he's like man if i spend sixty thousand and i make six ten thousand dollar checks yep i just broke even which means i made zero money mm-hmm. yeah if you really looked at bass fishing like that which i did a long long time, time ago, ago right and i'm like i i can't make enough in tournament winnings well, how else do you make money you know who taught me a lot about that mike mcclellan yeah yeah, yeah. we we just had him on yeah. he taught me a lot by that because I would counsel with him. I'd be like, how do you do this? Or what What do you expect when you talk to people and do this? And I spent a lot of time counseling. And it might still be on my bass fan. That, you know, who's your angler heroes? Well, Mike yeah. McClellan. Mike McClellan. We, yeah. Wow. We had a conversation with him when the cameras went off, went off all about business that yeah. I wish we would have had on the podcast. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I, when we talked about it and it went on for 30, 40 minutes, yeah. I was kicking myself because i was like this is what we needed on the podcast yeah yeah so i hope we get to do it again because he when he opened up about the business side Mm -hmm. i was like dude Mm -hmm. so much wisdom so much experience you know it was uh, and he had a couple of wins back to back you know early where he racked up 1996 arkansas river and ross barnett a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of winnings a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of big sponsorships back then eight elite wins yeah yeah Yeah. crazy yeah absolutely crazy hammer stick and he's sitting on the sideline yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and there's a huh Yeah. yeah huh yeah he did say that he got um, asked a BPT invite this year. Yeah, and turned it down. Yeah. Do you want to know the last couple of years? And and he wouldn't mind me saying that. You, his confidence was train wreck. wreck. That he said that on our podcast. Okay, this the format and yeah. everything. He's like, it was not for me. Yeah, it it wasn't for him. But it's everything that ended up happening. Yeah, throughout everything yep. is wrecked him yeah. emotionally yeah so and the, i didn't ask i didn't want to ask him but, straight up because we don't talk like we you and i talk and, yeah. and everything but you know I, I i wanted to ask him if you know and he admitted he's a minority owner of this company you know of mlf and everything and 
And I wanted to ask him, you know, with all the, with, you know, all the changes and everything and surrounding, you know, what's going on with the organization, like mentally, does it, I mean, does it affect your fishing? I think we all know the answer to that, but yeah. you know, it's, it's, you know, he, he more or less, you know, not blamed it, but attributed his performance because he is not a every fish counts guy. Yep. Now that I'm sure has a lot to do with it, but, but it's hard to ignore everything else yep. going on above. That's yep. my part. That's part of the, the question I asked. Why do you sign up for another year when it seems like it's pretty frustrating for you? And, you know, like I get the platform thing, yep. but it just seems like, man, that that has to be hard putting up with and going through that yeah. just your heart your head yeah. you know like why is it worth it there's a well there's a few contracts that are signed that says you have to fish a bpt mm-hmm. or, yeah. or leaks mm-hmm. so there is a few of them contracts and honestly my I, i've got a great relationship with general tire mm-hmm. big sponsor of major league fishing uh good paycheck yep. yeah great people to deal with we popped a new some really cool, funny commercials. Yeah. Mark Rose, Brett Mines, and I DFW. are going to come out. Yeah, that's cool. this year and get a lot of get play the mileage time. out of get the yeah. mileage yeah. out of those. Yeah. <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and Ferguson, Ferguson, I partnered up with Ferguson this last year. Uh, I've been seeing your house build. Yeah. Stuff, you know? oh, yeah. Oh, okay. That's you cool. Had, here's the crazy thing: all the Ferguson product that I have shown on my house build yeah. is just in box getting dropped off because I haven't got to install any of it yet in my house. So Ferguson got me for like. Two years. <laughs> you know, so they delivered all the product uh, for my house and stuff. Was it like plumbing and things? Yeah, all yeah. Pl- copper. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. They yes. Do a lot. Oh, nice. Yeah. Ferguson's a national plumbing supply company where you, and you can buy HVAC, plumbing, fire suppression. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, what, what are they doing in fishing? What, is there someone there that's really into fishing or is there a business to I, business? I tell you play? how Ferguson. Got involved with the uh, uh, major league fishing, the cups years and years yeah, and selects. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember. I remember Scott Ashmore. I was just gonna say, mm. wasn't that through Scott Ashmore? Scott Ashmore. What happened to him? Uh, is he opens? I don't know where he is. Did he fish opens this year? I don't know. Maybe. All I heard was he brought a lot of sponsorship money to the table, and he ain't with us anymore. Yeah. I, I heard he brought him to the selects, and they yeah. didn't even get an invite to uh, BPT, and he was like one of the people who brought a lot. I think the only two people on the selects that did not get an invite in 19. Him and Kurt? Dove. Dove. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. So, and they helped kind of build up that yeah. tour to what it was. What up? Uh, okay, something I always wanted to ask you about the selects. There are always rumors um, – and maybe you can answer this. Maybe you can't. There are all these rumors because he got invited and it was 20 grand. We could never afford it back then. We were broke. The selects? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but I was, the rumor was like you would pay, but there was no payback. You were basically buying TV time. Is that true? Uh, no, we did get paid back. Um, and later in the selects, we got sh- uh, show show money. If you won, you, you got paid. And that was Good. the whole time? Yeah. 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 Uh, it was, and, and I don't think I'm breaching any confidentiality, but we did have to buy in yeah. for the two shows. And, uh, I looked at it because of what they were guaranteeing was TV time. Right. I saw how good the cups were. Right. Right. We you all know, did. Yeah. 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 And I was like, this is dynamite. Yeah. Right. And a couple of people that vouched for me, Tommy Biffle, mm-hmm. Mike McClellan. Said, yep. call Watson. He'd be interested in this. So when they stood the selects up, they called me and said, "Hey James, would you like to?" Do? Yes, yeah. yeah. Sign me up. Sign yeah. me up. And I don't have my. Well, yeah. well, we're get. You know, we're going to meet up Big Cedar and have a discussion about everything. And it's like I don't care. I'm, I'm in. Doing I'm it. in. Yeah. Just like the five thousand kids, guys, yeah. gals that are willing to take my spot right, right now, now. Yeah. without reading a single thing. Yeah. I did the same thing then. Yeah, it's a nonstop. It, 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 that did a great for my career. Yeah. I got, I got a, I got to say this is this is not disparaging. I just want to put a light on our sport and how I see it. Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> I believe that bass fishing is as addictive as crack. It is. I truly do, like Tur- especially pro- tournament fishing. Yeah, and we're crackheads, mm-hmm. and the leagues 
are our dealers mm-hmm. and we're willing to do whatever it takes for an addict for that hit. to yeah. get our fix. Mm-hmm. And then for our sponsors, we go and, and sell the drugs some more. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And we go out here and we promote the sport. And get new young addicts. anglers and get new. It's a, a nonstop evolving door. And I don't mean that in a negative way. No, I'm just an saying analogy, yeah. that is just yeah. the, it's that's so, how yeah. addictive yeah. this is. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and unlike drugs and uh, stick and ball sports, yep. sooner or later, drugs and stick and ball sports will break you in half yeah. physically bass fishing not so much you can do it jimmy houston's 112 years old yeah, yeah. <laughs> he'd laugh if he heard me say that uh-huh. okay jimmy you're only a 100 <laughs> yeah. he's still fishing and you can yeah. do this yeah. and it don't matter if you're you male or female or any right. of that mm-hmm. you can fish and that's what's so great about our sport yeah the um the selects Everybody just um MLF back then, everybody loved it. It yeah. was great. It, when it was yeah. a boutique side gig TV show, no. It was stress. my second tour. Right. It was my second tour. Right. Yeah. I wore two uniforms. F my, and dub. Yeah, yeah. I wore the select uniform and I wore my my personal jersey. Yep. Yeah. I wore two. And I was hoping when the Bass Pro Tour come about, mm-hmm. and this is no beef against the Bass sure, Pro Tour. Sure. I gotta say these things because I don't want people to think I'm talking bad about right. it. Right. All right. But I was I was hoping when we s- signed up for the Bass Pro Tour that all 80 of us anglers would get to fish these cups and wear the cup jerseys right. and fish out of the cup boats. And then I still have my own boat mm-hmm. and right. my own jersey that I wear on tour. And I could go out to potential sponsor and say, it's I'm a two-tour touring pro. Yeah. Right. I got you two are. Technically, platforms. you are. Absolutely. Yeah. That didn't work out that way. No. Yeah. It, it did just not. It all changed. It, well, yeah. you had to, they made them qualifiers. Yeah. And, um, and, and Marty Stone and I, Marty, Marty, we'd go round and round and we're good friends and we could R. disagree. R. Marty. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'd be like, I'd be like, Marty's like, this is going to be the best shows ever because these guys are catching them and they're so competitive and they're just fishing so good. And I said, I beg to differ. I said, I don't care if you took the top. 10 and the bottom 10 and you put them out there on the water, you're going to have an equally good show yeah. right. of fishing because this is a produced product. One guy catches it. Yeah. One guy doesn't get to the cut line. Two guys are sweating bullets. It doesn't matter how yeah. good they did on the same tour story, this year. Right. Yeah. It's the right. same story. story. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That now, is true. now with the platform that you've given us on the Bass Pro Tour, make all 80 of us, give all 80 of us that opportunity for television, which is less important nowadays than ever, Mm -hmm. but give us that opportunity to showcase our personalities and our talents wherever it might may be, but they made qualifiers. And now I had to do good in the tournament one and two being the top 30 to qualify for the first cup, but I was good in tournament two and three but you had to be good in three and four to make it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it, not that it's just confusing to the public. It wasn't so confusing to us because we knew. But if you misstepped and you had a good tournament two and three instead of a good three and four, you missed a cup. Yeah. You yeah. missed that TV time. One thing McCullen said, and I think as a someone who viewed it and was a fan back then of the cups, um, or the selects, whatever they were back in the day. Cups and selects. Um, the, the show was so. Let me stop you. The TV, real quick. the show back yes, there. Yes, but it was so popular. Yeah, yeah. The cups went from a thirty minute to a one hour to a two hour. Yeah, completely sold out. And they're like, we can sell more. Yeah, right. let's call twenty four other guys. Right. We'll call them the selects, and it'll be identical to the cups. Right. Yeah, and it was still good. And it was an hour, and yeah. then it was a two hour. Yeah, and it was freaking fantastic. Well, yeah. I. McCullen said there was no pressure in those when he'd go fish them, so they were fun. And I think that that resonated by how y'all fished on those. Mm -hmm. Because even though you had stressful moments because it's fishing and you're competitive, I think that y'all's moods and how you carried yourself with the camera and interacted with the camera resonated with the audience. And so it was a fun thing to watch. It was. And a fun thing to view. It wasn't, you know, um, people just looking like they needed to cast a check that day. That's you right. Know? Yeah, even though I had a bunch of money invested in it. Right. Yeah. But I knew what I was getting. Yeah. I was getting some guaranteed. Return. 
That's right. Yeah. You make the most of it. Yeah. My grandma always said this. She's like, if you want, because I was a fat kid growing up. I'm fat now. I was a fat <laughs> kid growing up, and I was always, you know, you know, getting a little attention here and there. Yeah. And my grandma was like, man, Jimbo, if you want attention, she's like, why don't you just shove a flashlight up your ass and turn it on and go walking around the square on Friday night. That'll get you attention. <laughs> yeah. She seems fun. Yeah, she was the best. Oh, that's she awesome. She was the best. That is so awesome. I was like, oh, I guess I would get my, my eyes would be glowing. Is that your mother's mom? Yeah. 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 And you were with your mom just, what, yesterday? Yeah, yeah, yeah a couple days yeah, ago. Cruising around town. Oh, yeah. Had to take her to St. Louis. She's yeah. got some health issues, unfortunately, oh, with her back yeah. and like the worst thing about the whole doctor's deal, and my mom might watch this. The worst thing in the whole doctor's deal at the end of it, they're like, Well, here's the problem. We can see your current x ray and your last x ray. And she had this procedure. And he, the, the physician was like, Very, like, here's a problem. This is the first person to say, Here's a problem. Three people before them, they were like, we don't crazy. know. We can't, we don't know what's wrong with but you. But they wow. cut on her anyways. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then, uh, then he's like, all right, we'll get you set up. You got to get an MRI, CAT scan, bone density, this and that, and, and, uh, all this done and everything. And, and then he looks up and he goes, um, you're, you're a non-smoker. And I'm go, no, <laughs> she smokes like a chimney. <laughs> They won't work on her. Yeah. Oh, right. If she yeah. doesn't quit smoking for six to eight yeah. weeks. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's the thins her blood on her back. Oh, is worse right. than anywhere right. else. Yep. And yep. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You might as well just shot my mom right in the head. Wow. When she learned she couldn't smoke. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. the worst day of her life. Wow. So is she not going to get the surgery? She better stop. You better stop <laughs> smoking, mom. It's gross. <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> We met your mom at one of the yeah. yeah at the house there. I remember you you said some smart ass remark to her to Ish or someone, and you left the room and and it's Ish and I like asked your mom like hey, he has he always been like this and she says without a doubt since the day he came out he was always a freaking clown <laughs> well, and my, she was ragging on she you. Was, well I'm a Borson survivor yeah. <laughs> yeah. so <laughs> yeah. I, I just found out not hey I just found out too uh, I had shaggy baby syndrome this whole uh, time and I'm shady like ba- <laughs> That's awesome. You might have to edit that. I don't That's know. awesome. When you decided to join the army, was that a was that a, your decision or was yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait. I fishing put me there. Yeah, yeah. Fishing put me in the army, and here's why: because all I wanted to do was the fish tournaments, and I couldn't make enough money around here. Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't make enough money to even support buddy tournaments with my dad. Wow. It was just it, and I was like. Hell with it. If I can't do what I want to do and the way I want to do it, I'm good at running a backhoe. Yeah. And, and my stepdad, Ron, was in the Army. My grandpa, his dad, he was in the Army, double amputee, World War II wow. hero. I mean, top notch dude. So I had great examples. My grandpa, Bud, was an Air Force, uh, uh, Air Force, uh, airman back in the day in World War II. So I had wow. lots of good examples. So I talked to, Dad Ron and I'm like, I'm thinking about joining army. He says, probably a pretty good idea to get your ass out of here. What age was that? Nineteen. Nineteen years old. Yep. And uh I rolled out and uh joined the army in March uh March twenty sixth of nineteen ninety three was my date of entry. Wow. And uh got the job, run heavy equipment in the army. And wow. I was like How many years did you do? Almost nine. Wow. Yeah. That's active. amazing. It was when, fun. And when did you decide to hang it up? Uh, in 2001, uh, kind of early in 2001, my wife, uh, Sarah, had a really good job in the Waynesville School District there, Fort Leonard Wood, in the Waynesville School District, the town outside of Fort Leonard Wood, and uh, as a, a guidance counselor. And she's making big bucks. Mm-hmm. And I had inadvertently started a lawn mowing business because of a first sergeant that recruited me through Mm -hmm. fishing to work for him had a tree service and i got to mowing yards uh because he said hey watson come over i bought a ride i bought a house and bought a riding lawnmower and uh he said come mow my yard i'm going tdy me and the lieutenant got to go and i want carol to mow the yard 
come over the yard, hand me 40 bucks. I said, first of all, that's good. Don't pay me. Yeah. He's like, no, no, you work for me. You're going to get paid. And then two yards turned into eight. Yeah. Eight turned into 12. And before you knew it, I had like 60, 70 yards. Wow. And I'm still full-time army. And I'm like mowing the hell out of yards. And then the next year I went and paid cash for a giant grasshopper. Yeah. Zero turn mower. mower. And I walked in and Randy Pratt, I've been eyeballing, just drooling every time I'd walk in and take that piece of shit I'd been mowing with, just <laughs> running the wheels off of yeah. it. And he put a band aid on it. Get me back out. Yeah, Get right. back out there. Right. And I'm mowing more yards and I'm like, man, I want one. This is like $9,000 mower. Wow. And that next spring I come walking in. I'm like, mm hmm. Told Randy Pratt, Pratt's Lawn Garden in Waynesville, said, all right, still there. That's my mower. Wow. You want it? I go, yep. He goes, all right. And he slid a clipboard across to me. I, I started filling out. I said, and I stopped. I'm like, what? These things got titles? No, no, no. I said, what's, what is all, what do you want, want me to fill? Well, that's for credit. So you get your financing. And I said, <laughs> yeah. I said, does this fucking take care of it? Yeah. And I slapped down nine thousand dollars cash money. Wow. He's like, "Yeah, got you. Give me the- <laughs> <laughs> load it up." Wow, that's so awesome. That started my lawn career, and that's how we ended up not wanting to get out of the army. But I made three times the amount of money mowing yards. Yeah, than I did as a soldier. Wow. Nowadays, yeah. you could get a memo deal on a lawnmower. That's right. <laughs> Good. Through our boat works yeah. and how we, wor- how we work things. Yeah. Okay, here's what we're going to do on this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to use this all year. 12 month delayed yeah. bill. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to use it all year. I'll bring it back to you. You can get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to pay uh, you 100 a month for it. When you were doing the Army drill sergeant stuff, you had uh, several young men under you. What, so what's the um, so I always wondered so like the the scene in Full Metal Jacket right <laughs> I mean that that's like a, a it's iconic class. it is it is it really is yeah. were you that were you that drill sergeant were you that guy were you that tough did you have that position or or did my you... my battle buddy uh huh Muma was uh huh Doug Muma uh-huh. he was an engineer same MOS as me uh-huh. uh huh he was that guy yep and he he was very he didn't show any kind of emotion whatsoever. He was that guy. That guy. And we played off each other. And it was good cop, bad cop stuff. Wow. And uh we would go fruitcake when we had to go full blown fruitcake. <laughs> but Muma was the bad guy. Yeah. And uh it was it was the best tag team deal ever i mean what's the ultimate goal there for uh you know the privates uh, under you i guess it's it's teach them discipline teach them rank the the basic combat training is simply turning a civilian into a a, a, a one of the best ways. Yeah. Okay. The politically correct yeah. is you could get yeah. canceled yeah. nowadays. Well, basic combat training was all about taking a civilian and teaching them how to follow instructions mm-hmm. without hesitation. Discipline without hesitation. And you had fall to fall in line. Fall in line. Yeah. And we had to move in a uniform manner. Yep. We had to shoot. You had to communicate. Yeah. And the, and all we did for nine straight weeks was teach us. A, a, Teach a civilian how to survive on today's modern battlefield. Plain and simple. That's it. Whatever job they had inside the army was the next step. Eight or nine weeks yep. called advanced individual training. But me, we we took a fat slob or really good person into good shape, and we taught them how to march, taught them how to move from point A to point B in a uniform manner, and follow simple instructions. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people inside that, uh, you got a lot of people. It's funny, uh, in basic training, you get all sorts and you become a mom, a dad, wow. an uncle, a priest. Wow. You know, all these things you become as a drill sergeant to mold these young people yep. so that when time comes and there is always in basic training, there's always this one time. Time towards the end of basic training where it seems like shit just blown up throughout the day and some fake stuff news comes 
through the grapevine down to the privates and like we rush them all to battalion headquarters and to there might be our company maybe another company of privates look the uh, syria has bombed libya and jordanian people's heads are getting cut off and we've been called up yeah and then privates start crying and Holy losing their shit. shit and pissing themselves and all this stuff like you privates are going to be advanced. We're going to continue with basic training for three days, and you're going to war. Wow. And the kids are just losing it. So we try to train them to say, we're going to teach you how to go immediately to your units yeah. and meet your new platoon sergeant, and you're going to trust that your new platoon sergeant knows what he's doing, and you better do what he or she tells you to do so that you can stay alive another Ball day. Online, yeah. That's basic training shoot physical fitness history and and movement wow is what it's all about you and i had to provide a purpose direction and motivation that's it whenever you look at uh the situation with the organization that you're at right now and stuff and when you come from the military like you were saying you're you're taught to not question, like to, you can't hesitate when yep. you're told to do something, yep. you have to have full faith in the person telling you what to yeah, do. Faith. And so when you're in your, your civilian now or however yeah. that works and you're dealing with the organization and it seems like you might not have faith in your organization. Trust, yeah. Faith, trust. Yeah. Yeah. How do you handle that? Uh, as someone who, who knows what you know, you know, coming from the military. Well, it's all about how you make your own brand. Yeah. And how many people are paying you. What What do I have to do to get paid by Black Rifle Coffee? Yeah. Here's my contract says I must do this, this, and this. And no organization and, could discount no, that or take that away no, from you because it's yours. It. That's right. And they know that this is a platform that I'm on, that I'm on and that's how I get paid. But yeah, when, for, from now on, Trey... Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be a good boy. I'm just going to put my head down. And I'm going to kick rocks from I'm get out, launch my boat and kick rocks to the ramp. Keep my head down. Not look to my left or the right. Wow. wow. Jump in my boat. Wow. And the camera's on me. I'm going to turn it on. When the camera's off of me, I'm going to turn it off, get in my truck, go to the room. Private Watson. That's it. I'm just. Not. That's where you're at. It's where yeah. I'm at. I'm done. You wow, seem bro. Very uh is it I'm, demoralized or no, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm winning. Yeah. I'm winning. Yeah. And I'm not gonna discourage anybody in the invitationals, the Toyos, the BFLs, or the opens, or the MPFL, or the elites. I'm not gonna discourage discourage anybody to want to come do what we do. Yeah. Come right. On. Come on. Yeah. Do it. I, I, I know I, I'm picking up exactly what you're putting down yeah. right now. Yeah. Here's what yeah. I have. Here's the advice I do have for you young whippersnappers. Yeah. You better figure out how to make money with it. Yeah. And you better not give your truck and boat wrap away for mm -hmm. $7,000. Bingo. Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah. Because you just fucked me over. Mm -hmm. And Chris. Yeah. And Trey. And everybody else that yep. does this for By me. doing that. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and I've been at it. 10, 11 full years you now. You know damn well, yeah. And it ain't changed. Mm -hmm. I've got mine. Mm -hmm. Can you get yours? Yeah. Um, one thing that you said, uh, you went on several podcasts and you said some things that uh, some people took issue with. And there was one that I was like a little confused by. And oh, I'd like boy. to go there. And it's the, um, <laughs> you seem to not like feeder systems. Oh. Okay. But I'd, I'd like to, I feel like there's more to what you said. I, I, okay. I was on a podcast with Todd and Ish and I do, I, I do like feeder systems. Uh huh. I, I, I just don't believe that the higher echelon that we fish at mm -hmm. attrition should be more than 10% of the field. It's too hard to get here. Mm -hmm. There's, Two, you you think steep. that that is it's steep. A, that's a lot of that's a big number, right? That's yeah, a, that's a lot of people to lose more than ten percent of your field to the tour below you is, in my opinion, I signed a contract. I agree. Steve. Not that I agreed to it. You just you either sign that contract, whether you agree or disagree, has no relevance whatsoever in anything. If you want to do this, you sign that contract. 
and you get your ass out there. That's it. Yeah. I don't care if you agree with it. I don't care if you pull rope in this direction with me or in the opposite direction like it's tug of war. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't not matter. It so does not matter. You um, But you seem to really have beef <laughs> with the Tackle Warehouse tour. It just seems like what I mean, like there was more to it or there, there was something I was struggling to understand what you were saying in those moments when you. Uh, let me. How, how do you. <laughs> how, OK, so you've got a professional tour. I mean, obviously, there needs to be new blood in at yeah. X amount right. of time or an X amount. Uh, how would you. OK, let's say you, you know, you get your way through th this year yeah. And let's say things don't go the way you want. Uh, let's say, hey, I get kicked off the elites next year. You and I are going to start a tournament organization. Okay, we've got 50. You want to lose all the money well, we ever made. Yeah. <laughs> so we have got our tour. Yeah. Like, in, in your opinion, like, what is best case scenario? I mean, what, you know, what, what would you suggest? I don't, um, I, I don't know. But it's not the, your job. I know it's yeah, not your job. But. But, but, but in the elites, which I've never fished the elites, and a lot of people will be on there, go back to the elites. Well, yeah. sorry. I'm yeah, right. <laughs> never was in the elites. <laughs> that I'm, comment gets thrown around does, a lot. but that's yeah. fine. And, yeah. and, and, and that's nice of them. Yeah. I've only fished 17 bass events in my life, and one of them is a classic. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, right. Yeah. yeah. You know what my first one was? What's that? Larry Nixon won it. In 1992, Holy the 25th God. anniversary tournament at Beaver Lake in June. How of about that? That was my first Bassmaster event ever. As a fished. pro? No, no. It was button. draw and draw. Oh, draw. That's right. Yeah. Draw and draw. Damn, you're old. That's right. Sorry. 92, bro. 1992. Larry Nixon won throwing a spook. spinner bait. Spook. Spook down Ooh, the dam. That's sexy. Yeah, that's sexy. Yeah. So, but the tackle warehouse. The, you got the Bassmaster leads. And you got one step underneath you. It's the bass opens. Right. My deal with the tackle warehouse too, and, and I'm. It's not that I don't like the tackle warehouse, and I don't like the 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 tour. What I what I don't like about it is it's really not separated from the Bass Pro Tour. Yeah, it's like two tours. It's weird because y'all both pay a lot of money. It's confusing. Y'all both pay a lot of money. They're big tournaments. They get a lot both televised. Both, both, televised, yeah, both get day. a lot of um, live media, live, live, everything. There's it, it's almost like two major tours. So it is a you blur answered. and confusing. You answered it. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. that, is, that is confusing. Yeah. Like what it it it, it again <laughs> the tackle warehouse maybe they should be flopped where the tackle warehouse tour has 50 or 80 people. Right. And then the the Bass Pro Tour has 100. Yeah. Maybe. You know, that that's but it, it, yeah. It is it's weird. just my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not I'm not a yeah. shareholder. No, Shareholders yeah. don't have much say, say in it anyway. anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a shareholder in it. <laughs> yeah. And I can see here and throw uh, uh rocks at a glass the glass house yeah. and and Major League Fishing could come in and tell me how to run my real estate right. office better than Dave runs it. Right. I'd tell him, well, you can tell me all you want, but I don't run nothing. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I, I'm just saying, when all this all started, the, the the biggest thing about all this is, is like, we're, we're growing the sport. I don't know what that means. Anymore. I, Maybe I'd misunderstood what it meant before. What's the, yeah? What's the goal? I don't know what growing sport is. Is it to sell more fishing licenses? Because COVID did we did that. Yeah. yeah. Is it to sell? Is it to make a bass boat more valuable? We we did that, did we? Did we not? <laughs> it sounds did, like it with the prices make, I've seen on them. Ro rods and reels. Is it to to be more profitable and sell more rods and reels? We did. We're Hit we're doing that. that. Yeah. We're doing that. And I'm not poo-pooing everything here. It's not negative. I like the way I'm making a living. But what I'm is the I'm very angle? thankful that I have other yeah. revenue streams, mm -hmm. which most anglers and some anglers can't do what I did, can't afford to get in trouble like I can. Yeah. All right? Yep. Because this is their only sole yeah. income. They have to have this platform to promote Daiwa or to promote uh, nitro boats. Mm -hmm. they, they have to have this. If it went away, if all this went away from me tomorrow, mm -hmm. I'm fine. You're okay. Yeah. yeah. And so I get worked up and emotional about things where 
a lot of people just can't show that. Yeah. Do your so, sponsors get mad when you get worked no. up and emotional? My sponsors got me because of who I am. Who you are. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Did you get phone calls saying thank you or anything when you did get emotional? I got tons of phone calls and thank you. Not one phone call that, not one phone call that, well, I did get one phone call. <laughs> you got a phone call. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, it's just, it, it, it and I, I didn't get to finish a, a, a road I was going down with, with Ish and Todd. Yeah. About the all American and, and this and that. And, and I finally got pissed off at Todd and Ish cause they were being idiots. And well, uh, I'm like, they got me all worked up. Now I can't spit out what I'm yeah. trying to spit out. Shut up both of you. Mm-hmm. But I kind of said, I said, you know, about the, the all American and the Toyotas and the invitationals and the, wish they'd all go away. And, I didn't get to finish what I was saying, and all of all I was trying to say is is so much in every one of those the the all American, which is by the way, on, talk about bucket list. That's a bucket list. I want to go fish an all American. Yeah, never made. I fished everything except the all American. Wow, I want to fish it. All those people that win. And I want to ask you how you guys feel about that when it comes to the classic. We know that the Federation gets a slot or two. Mm-hmm. It's been there since, like, the beginning, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, how fair is it if the – and this is just my own yep. look at it. Yeah. The All-American won the All-American. The BFL guy, hardest freaking thing to get to and win is All-American and the TBF mm-hmm. right. or, or the Nation. Bass Nation. Yeah. Grassroots guys got full time jobs fishing their ass off. They get to it and they win. Mm-hmm. You win that, you go to the Red Crest. You win the Toyota Championship, which pays two hundred plus thousand dollars. You go to the Red Crest. You win the Tackle Warehouse Invitational thing championship I, or whatever. So I think if you just win a tournament, oh right, right. You go to the Red Crest. Oh wow! So the Red Crest seems to be getting filled, like filled up with you'll it's hard enough to get to the bass pro tour yeah. yeah and then once you're there and then you qualify for the red crest which i missed this year by a little bit it's like it feels like man the, all these other people get to show up and what if they hit a home run Do we applaud them of course as good sports yeah right we applaud them but like damn mm-hmm. these guys didn't do what i mm-hmm. had to do for x amount of let's you know, just say this year yeah, it seems like it. the classic. It the seems investment. like the classic opens up a slot for this. this yeah, you know, team this, team that. Yeah, but all I'll, female league. You know, wait, who sold I, the most I, Girl Scouts? Who sold the most Girl Scout? Cookies? Yeah, that slot's on there too. I, yeah, that's I'm, like the fifties eighth. I know that's exaggerating. Yeah, but that's what I was worked I up. I get yeah. it to an extent, but I, I'll, I'll look at it from a business standpoint. The carrot you. You get the carrot, the carrot. So you get more participation at mm-hmm. other levels. It keeps them interested in the bigger level, right? Mm-hmm. I think that if that carrot's not down on the lower levels, then they're not paying as much attention possibly to you guys. You get um, from a, a sponsorship level um, companies that are interested in the classic because of what's people talking about it at the grassroots level. I think that there's a much bigger picture. Yep. Totally get what you're saying, yep. but from a business standpoint, Totally get the other side. Oh, that's there's two sides of this. There's yeah. fishing and then there's the business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they got a business to run. Yeah. 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 And yeah. they and they're you're right. But man, some of those carrots, I don't I don't I think that these organizations do really well on on tournament entries it, it, without it's confusing, a you know. Without yeah. A carrot. yeah. It's it, I get yeah. very confused on you were talking about um you're growing the sport and what is that? You don't even know. I don't, or what, I don't know what that means. Yeah, mm-hmm. tell me, you know, a better definition. And that's kind of Because we awesome. went from 180. Do you have 100, 104 on the elites? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah it's a 100 maybe. person tour, but then okay. um, yeah, because of like medical exemption, the two legends add two spots and then yeah. usually you have one or two medical exemptions. So so hundreds probably the target. Yeah, 100 number. is what's the actual. And then it's 80 yeah. on the Bass Pro Tour. So 180. That's 180 guys, and you throw the MPFL. That's the, and we'll talk about the MPFL yeah. if you want to. Yeah. But, but now that's 180 guys. Well, in one 
one meeting, we we went to 150 guys. Yeah. To a sport that's supposed to be bigger and better than it's ever been before. Right. Yeah. That's pretty disheartening. Right. I, I it's definitely. pretty aggravating. I don't know um, if you can talk on this, um, but I was super confused because I watched uh, Boyd's interview with the Iganellis and he kept saying this has nothing to do with finances. You know, it, this is not a cost saving measure, blah, blah, blah. But it, it was confusing because I was also hearing around the grapevine that y'all's entry fees or um, payouts got cut this year. So it's hard. I, I can't keep up with our industry because, one, we need more sponsors. We, we need more money, blah, blah, blah. But in two, in interviews, they're saying, like, money's not bad. You know, I'm not doing anything to I, save money. I'm confused <laughs> as, as well. And why are we doing it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is a change of a format? Do you, do we need to jack the entry up five hundred yeah. more dollars per angler? But thirty, it's actually thirty five because they're still going to bring five up from the tackle warehouse tour this year. Yeah, yeah. So you just, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. It's just it's very. Hard to keep up. Well, it's it's very deflating. I mean, it's very aggravating it's tough enough to stay in the biz yeah in 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 one meeting uh thank goodness that they went to a 66 man field instead of a 50 for i'll ask you this. It's like what hanging you- off a cliff and then someone coming in just stepping on yeah. your fingers and you're just barely hanging on yeah. with pinky yeah yeah what are your sponsors what was your sponsor's reaction to that news at the tour or that it, things were getting cut like good that? question i have no earthly idea really because i haven't asked them I'd I haven't. Yeah. I haven't. They know I have to go out there and I have to do what I do and yep. and don't know. So okay. far I haven't been no nobody's called to say, hey, due to the reduction. You know the biggest struggle when I was on the FLW tour, uh wasn't the biggest struggle, but one of the easiest things for sponsors, and this is why if you fall out of the Bass Pro Tour, this is my main concern. Granted, things have changed. Social media has changed mm-hmm. it. And maybe the tour, just like you guys have said, maybe that doesn't matter as much. It's just mm-hmm. you doing whatever you're doing right. and at, beefing up your YouTubes and all yeah. this stuff. But in when I fished FLW Tour, a lot of sponsors, a, a, a demic sponsors out there would say, you know, you'd, you'd come back and say, hey, you know, Hey, can my deal get a little bit better or maybe instead of giving me one, can you get, will you give me two of these? And man, you guys heard this. Oh yeah. Man, James, boy, he's fishing the Bassmaster elites. Yeah. <laughs> Heavens would open red carpets everywhere. You'd walk daisies would be thrown in front of you. You smell like lilacs. Every time you wake up, <laughs> when you spit fire will come out of your mouth. <laughs> If you are on the Bassmaster Leeds, but you're on the FLW tour, so <laughs> here you go. <laughs> That's the truth. That's the truth. Seriously. Someone uh, else. Someone else was saying that the yeah. other day too. That, I mean, yeah. That's how it would yeah. actually do. Wow. You know? And 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 I'm not I'm not faulting or saying anything bad about it, but that was just how it was <laughs> because the elites were so much. Oh, they were more, more prestigious. Yeah. Sense. Than the FLW tour was, yeah. and that's why Ayler and 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 Christy and you know all yeah. them guys drifted over, fished the opens, went into the elites. Yeah. You know, I can name one guy that that qualified for the elites that stayed the FLW. Can you name him? Mm, one guy. Uh, Blockett and, just said his name. One one guy he's still active. Mark Rose. Oh, yeah. no, it wasn't that name. Yeah. yeah. Mark Rose. Hmm. He stayed with FLW. Wow. So that was, was that, his Was it a team deal? He had a team deal, probably? I don't. I think he probably has. Walmart or something? He he did have a yeah. Walmart deal, but I think he qualified but after Walmart was gone. Oh, right. And he just said, this this is where I'm comfortable. Right. And Mark does well for himself. He's well, well taken care of. Markets with a lot of good companies. Mm-hmm. And he said, this is my home. I'm staying here. Yeah. yeah. So, kudos to him. Yeah. 
Talk so, to me about the uh, NPFL. You've been doing some on the water work with them. I, I behind or uh, we, some some uh, podium work with them. Yeah, I did some work with them last year. The the budget was kind of tight, and they said, "Hey, we're not going to do it this year. We'll call you up again." Mm-hmm. Uh, so they 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 got great people. They got Luke and Fat Cat, and I'm like, in no way, shape, or form do I ever want to take Fat Cat or or put. What they're doing. I would bow out in a heartbeat. Yeah, now, right. if they said, now it's between you and Luke, I'd say, who? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Flunkin' Duncan? <laughs> yeah. That guy? <laughs> yeah. nah, you don't want him. He's terrible. He's bad business. <laughs> I'll do it for half. <laughs> 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 but uh, great, great league. Yeah. Well ran. Um, You know what? They... Uh, they, they're doing well, aren't they? They're doing well. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and they exist. And you know why they exist? Because there's plenty of crackheads yeah, who want to pay thousand percent. and sit. And I always I, I compare uh, tournament circuits to blackjack tables. We can go all go to the casino, have a great time, sit down at a five dollar blackjack table, hopefully play for hours and have a great time. If you want to be a big baller, let's go sit at the hundred dollar table mm-hmm. and play. I like to sit at a hundred dollar table when I come to the bass tournament world yeah. and the MPFL stood up because it's a needed product. Yeah. Right. There's guys $5 willing to pay 5,000 bucks mm-hmm. and sit at the hundred dollar table. Mm-hmm. They don't care if they're Harry Moore, Harry, if you're listening, love you, Harry Moore fished <laughs> FLW forever. He, every once in a while, he cash no check. Harry loved to fish the FLW tour. You know, if I was you, if I was James Watson and I, I, you know, had where I could fish one more league at a organization that maybe wasn't my biggest fan that I wasn't happy with, I knew it was just going to be another year. I'd say, screw that organization. I go to MPFL. I say, look, I got a good personality. You, you could use my personality. Can we work out some sort of equity deal for me to come over here, start a podcast? Let me help brand your anglers, show their personalities, and uh, let's just, let's figure something out because I can be better used over here. Maybe if you still want to fish, you can, but, you know, with MPFL, but I I think you- She just unveiled your 2025 plan. Just like (laughs) Like that. that. (laughs) That's a good idea. And I'm not, I'm not against, I'm open to that. And I I, I thought, I thought that too, if if I want to stay- they got all the potential to grow, right? Yeah. Yes, they do. And They're if, up and coming. And mm-hmm. if you were a part of what helped them grow, yeah, and you could be happy, yeah, and that could resonate. You know, you know what fans like to see. You bet. You've seen what got eyes on you. Yeah. Uh, that's just me. You know. Uh, no, and that, and and I and they need and help I appreciate branding that, and their I've, anglers. I've thought about that, yeah. and they. They do want some more named anglers. Yeah. And, and, and they don't really need, it's not that they don't need named anglers. They do, you know, they've got. They want some more named anglers. But they need help branding their anglers. Yeah. And, and it is very hard to be branded. You got to show your personality. Yeah. And to show your personality, you got to have people around you that help you. Yeah. yeah. You know? I think they got good product. Yeah. I really do. If you guys watch their live. Their lives were really good. I've seen some segments, especially yeah. um, because they showed the the uh, live scope and yeah. stuff. So a lot of people were sharing that. Yeah. Um, the, and I watched it in the beginning too. You know, I, I think that Luke does a good job. I, I think I do too. Uh, I think I, Fat Cat getting involved and and being on there with Luke. I think they do a great job and they get better and better. The chill vibe. Every, it's like a yes. yeah, yeah. They're getting better every time they're on. Just like JT, Chad, and Marty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you know that Chad dude? Had zero experience yeah. in bass fishing. I can yeah. tell he had zero experience, but he's very professional. Man, he's good. At he's, ta- good. he's good at yeah. talking. Yeah. Chad's the, he's got a great memory. His yes. delivery he's, is spot on. He's too good for fishing. But he's yeah. studied, but he had yeah. to study yeah. to be as good as he is, yeah. Yeah. as quick as he got. Yeah. I good. think I think that Chad and JT and Marty, all three of them, re- I really, and everybody's got their. I don't like Dave Mercer. I don't like yeah, Zona. No, I don't course, like yeah. I don't like uh JT and Marty's too dry. We got them naysayers all the time. But I thought our studio production or our studio guys, especially yeah. Chad not being a bass fisherman, I think as a dynamite. He's Chad's very funny. yeah, he's very professional. Uh Marty, I just 
I'll say this about I'd love to have Marty on the podcast. I, I've told Dona this. Call uh, him. Oh well, Zona said I think he'd do it. You know, I do too. Um, well, we're gonna be. Um, he, I think he got Murray this year, so that's what I'm gonna ask him. Uh, maybe he sees this, but I also find it hilarious, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> he might not do it after I say this. Um, biggest propaganda pusher you guys had. I'm sorry. He was like, he would say stuff like that was pro ill mental health that just was like, oh, give me a break. And then now he doesn't have a job. I just think it's. I oh, just, Lord. What? Yes. Oh, God. Well, I just think, like, he was, like, the number one MLF. Like, he had the talking points down. He made things look like... Yeah. Was that even public like, knowledge? That wasn't even public knowledge. What? That he doesn't have a job. Everybody knows that. They talk about it on all the podcasts. Hmm. Everybody knows he doesn't have a job. Hmm. It's not yeah. a secret. I just think, like, he was down to ride for MLF. Yeah. Of all people that would do anything He's and say anything invested. for MLF. Yeah. And then, boom, he got That's his. Kicked. That was his baby. Yeah. Yeah. That's when I was like, yeah. dude, I, what is going on? I don't I don't like that for anybody. Allie Akers got let go. That's right. Early. Allie yeah. did. Yeah. And wow. I don't know what Allie's role was, but she was there since she day one. A long the time. Selects First time I met Allie. They trimmed was- tons. Yeah. They. They've trimmed and trimmed and trimmed. Personnel. So, yeah. So yeah, I it's first time it's yeah. a business. Yeah. yeah. But businesses doing good don't have to trim that much. Yeah. Well, you would think so. You look at the MPFL and they run on a skeleton crew. Yeah. They got a few volunteers too. Right. Which is a good deal. But they, they didn't they didn't go down to a skeleton crew. No. They started with it and they're yeah. still there and they're building a good product. Right. And there's, um, I, I tell you this too about Brad. Um, I've seen him DQ a dude. See the owner or the tournament director, tournament Brad. director, Brad, Brad, uh, I've seen him DQ a cat stepping out of line, stepping out of line. Mm-hmm. And then when you DQ a cat stepping out of line, that's the bar. Every, everybody gets go. in order. Everybody gets in line. Yep. Question. Thank yep. you for opening yeah. that door. You know, it's basic, gotta happen. In basic training, you, there's always one tough guy you had to make an example of, and we did it. We had to because yep. you know why we had to have the discipline and respect. Mm-hmm. We right. demanded it. Mm-hmm. Do you think um, when you were at FLW, was there a lot of cheating going on, or people thought there was? People thought there was. Did mm-hmm. I have I ever seen anybody directly like back then? Back then, did you feel like there were people like getting favoritism that may have been not playing by the rules back then? It's it's out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, it, you see it. it, it you hear about it, it everywhere. No, no. Where I'm going is so comparing the FLW days to the BPT days and everything that that we've heard about that. Oh, uh, was FLW worse or is BPT worse? I don't know how to answer that. Because nothing's concrete. Yeah, nothing's yeah, concrete. Need, exactly. You, you, yeah, and you can't, you know, can I say, I saw this guy pull a stringer of bass out and throw one in his live well. Right. And I've never seen a violation right. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are there, there, is there, do I feel like there's been bending of rules and so on and so forth? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but. I also believe if there's any concrete evidence mm-hmm. of that, the, if you if you did it. if you did see something mm-hmm. and you don't report it, you're, you're just, just as guilty. guilty. Just yeah. as guilty. Just as guilty. Yeah. You um you had went on Duncan's podcast and talked about what had happened in the selects or whatever, and I knew about that. When something like that happened in the selects. What made you want to sign up for the BPT? I guess you stayed with the selects though back well, then. I didn't have I didn't have any option when the BPT existed. Again, being that the selects were so good for my brand and mm-hmm. and and elevating my FLW status to the next level, you just wanted more of that. I wanted more of that, mm-hmm. and it it was a proven product. Absolutely, right. So you signed up At for the, the proven time, product because sure. oh, yeah. I knew how to. I knew how to work that and monetize that. Yeah. yeah. So, when, did you really think it, that that proven product could be scaled to a bigger, um, you know, taken to a hundred guys or 80 guys or whatever? That's, and still, that's what, that's what we were sold. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we were, 
that's what we when we pull the rope in the same direction that's what we cut well that's what we were shooting for yeah, mm-hmm. the same guaranteed tv time and that sort of product the the, the you know the mass exodus that took place from bassmaster to the bpt was tremendous was it like 70 uh 60 i think yeah it was absolutely devastating yeah. I mean, it was a, a lot yeah a i lot. thought there, was, I thought there no- was only like eight or ten flw guys called over yeah that i don't know maybe 65 i don't remember yeah. but all i thought was it's over. like even when he stayed i thought oh yeah they've got too many people for this yeah. not to work yeah, yeah. now Back then, if, if and and I think I know where you're going at this. Do I wish that I knowing what I know now? Do I wish I would have picked up the phone and called Bruce Akins? One thousand, one million percent. Mm-hmm. Like if we went back to 2018 yes. and yep. you could get an invite to fish Bassmaster, or you could yep. fish the BBT. And I could have got. I could have oh, come yeah. to the Bassmaster. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I knew Bruce. I yep. made a classic already. Yep. Yeah. I was well liked inside yep. uh, there. Mm-hmm. If you were I had it, you were committed if, early. Yeah. If I if if I would have known the way now, if you looking and, back, and, and you guys know on your podcast and everywhere else, people are going to say that's because you suck and you ain't caught shit. No, for business, mm-hmm. had I known that that the cups were going to be qualifiers, now my odds went down. A li- I'm making a business decision. Yeah, and my odds just went down a little bit. And, you know, if I'd known what the way things were going, I would have called Bruce Aiken and Bruce would have got me in. You know, Shane LeHue, yep. all them, you know, yeah. Brandon Cobb, all uh, those guys they, were all yeah. FLW guys yeah. just yeah. like yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Were they, are Canterbury. they tremendously good fishermen? Yeah. Yes. But did I fall in, the in, same in, group. in yeah. that yeah. same group? Yeah. yeah. Bruce yeah. would have said, come on, yeah. come yeah. on. Matter of fact, what we had talks. I remember those talks were going on in two thousand uh mm-hmm. end of two thousand eighteen. Yeah. I remember Canterbury coming across yeah. the, the the list and I Cobb. Would, and, I pushed for Lucky. And, yeah. and yeah. I remember the only reason why you James Watson was on that list because yeah. you were already involved with the selects yeah. or whatever it was yeah. and you were already committed to yeah. that side. Yeah. Yeah. I was sweating bullets well uh, and even, you know, was was uh, asking uh, Rick, my boss at Bass Pro at the time, was like, man, do you know if I'm on that list? Well, I think you are, dude. I think you had good enough selects. I mm-hmm. think the, that your value to the company. I mean, please, whatever you can, Rick, just oh, get me invited yeah. to the Bass Pro Tour. Yep. Because yeah. I knew how I could monetize it. Yep. So. What a time. What a time. What a time now. Like, this yeah. is like. Okay. I got another question before you start to wrap this up or whatever you're doing over there. Have we been on? How long have we been, been doing on? this? I do my podcast like four hours. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched a few. <laughs> watched. Um, so a year comes and it's over. Do you know right now what you plan to do next? Yeah, I think I got. There's some big stuff happening right here in Ozarks going on. That uh, the Oaks tour or whatever. No, no, it has nothing to do with fishing. So interesting. I, I'm, yeah. I uh, and I'm not putting all my eggs in this basket, but there's a potentially big project that's going cool. that's coming together. And if it gets green lighted, I'll be in the excavation business, hammering rocks here near Branson and the Ozarks. That's big business, big business, here, bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I got my my foot in the door already. Awesome. We're talking multi million dollar contract. Oh, yeah. And. I will be absorbed with that. And nice. the next thing, and I'm, you know, I have been eyeballing your guys' cabin rent, here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You guys have been to my house. Yep. You know how where it sits and the, mm-hmm. the 180 Beautiful. degree view, and mm-hmm. you can catch crawdads. And yeah. I got a swim pool since you've been there. Yeah. Yeah. Tarantulas, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all the yeah. fine things you yeah. want to catch with yeah. your bare hands. <laughs> Chris freaking people out with tarantula crawling <laughs> on him and stuff. <laughs> 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 but my my next phase in life is, is my home that you guys have been to is nightly rental yeah. and i am and i always do crazy stuff with my money in slow markets yeah that's the time We're, to make a move yeah unfortunately it's cost me a lot of money and mm-hmm. the interest rates so high i'm building a new home and right now to and i'm going to move into it 
but the wing that my master suite is on the wing. can be locked <laughs> off. Right. Yeah. And then I am building my new house to be uh, nightly rental friendly as well. Sprinkler system. It's getting installed. I see you got wow. sprinkler system right. here. That's an extra $35,000 for me in my new house. Yeah. Now, my old house, I don't have to. Right. But in a nutshell, I'm shifting gears on life. This is the longest job I've had. I've loved it. And I don't mind to continue doing it. And my sponsors are going to continue to pay me. I'm not going to walk away from that job. Sure. Right. I might shift gears and go somewhere else and do the same kind of job if they'll support me. But I want uh, people to watch your podcast, find me, DM me, and I'll tell you about my nightly rental. Seven bedroom, awesome. sleep like 20 people. Perfect for tournaments. Yeah, it's perfect for tournaments. Yeah, you know man. how many boats? At uh, one time in a PAA, we had 11 boats. That's insane. Car yeah. Carl Jackson had the kangaroo flute. He didn't come out of that closet for a week. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was right. some fun. I wasn't there, but I heard. Terrible. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, the, 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 my two homes, my old one and my new one. And uh, that's good. Nightly rental program. And good. I'm excited about it. I've got room in between the two houses if I want mm -hmm. to build another one, but I think the privacy will be lost. But that's where I'm. That's where I'm going at. And we're and pushing to have more tournaments out here at Table Rock with yeah. Bass Pro Shops. We should. Yeah, we should. Yeah, it's the it's the middle of the country. Yeah. Like everyone, it's it's just a middle drive for everyone. I don't know. Uh, I've never gotten. Bass has never said this to me, but I feel like maybe they didn't come around much because of the split situation. I don't really know, right? But for some reason, after 2018, the Ozarks have not been a part of the Elite Series ever again. Uh, they finally brought the Opens back this year to the area, you know, to we Lake got, of the Ozarks. Oh, yeah, Lake of the Ozarks. But this past yeah, year, but yeah. um, and they're just now going back to Grand Lake for the first time since the split th for the Classic. Classic, yeah. But um, that's the first of all of those since the split. The, I, wonder, I wonder if there's any correlation to that. It, it makes you wonder because we... I want to see a Classic on this beautiful body of water right here. You know, you know what the deal is with Table Rock? And I know with Johnny's involvement, he wants... To have the tournament as close to his product, which is Big Cedar, yeah. which right. is Long Creek. Right. But the problem with Table Rock Lake is parking. Yeah, we do it's not have a ramp. Yeah. In the middle of the lake where you really want to have a tournament, so we can go left or right. Yeah. yeah. He's here. Got the down here, you can only you can only go right. 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 Yeah. And and if five or six of you go left, left. Yeah. you're done. Yeah. That's what I was looking at. Um, because. His facilities would be perfect for a classic. He's got the arena. It's the best. It would be great. I know he really, from what I've been told, he really wants one here. But then you go, I was looking just because we've been here all week with meetings and stuff. And I was looking at the parking facilities of his marina and it he, there's exist. no boat parking for even a small classic no. build. There's not enough. No. So. These are the excavation projects you're talking about because that's, that's <laughs> what I, we need. I do feel like, though, if Bassmaster said, Johnny, let's do this. Let's have a classic. He'd have dynamite somewhere blowing oh, it up yeah. in the parks and boats. Yeah. Yeah. I really do. And if they could put that closer to my house or the Kimberling City Bridge and mm -hmm. or, right. or in Mid Lake uh, with a bigger ramp, Mill Creek ramp, probably might hold 60 boats. Right. Yeah. But if that ramp was, was bigger... Kelly Power, you guys know Kelly. Uh -huh. Yeah. Kelly's okay, been pushing at Ulrich Marine, has been pushing for years the state and talking to the, supposedly the right people in the state and the Tourism Bureau about getting a bigger, better facility built on the core. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're battling the core here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and unlike Grand Lake, which is a private lake. Right. Unlike Lake of the Ozarks, which is a private lake. Yeah. The core runs Beaver, Table mm -hmm. Rock, Tanny Como, and Bull Shoals. Yeah. Bull Shoals be a tremendous, you guys have fished Bull Shoals. Oh, yeah. Tremendous lake. What's wrong with Bull Shoals for tournaments? There ain't nowhere to stay. No. That one, no, no. There's nowhere to go eat. There's, But there's plenty of places here. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah. We got it here. You guys are staying in a premier rentbranson.com property yep. right yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, you're going to see my property with them soon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Plug. Good. No, that's great. Plug. No, that's great. Let's get people loaded <laughs> yeah. up in that place, this man. Is it's legit. His, his, Dude, let me just you, tell you. You mentioned Allie Acres the other day. First time I met her at your house. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> She's 
Yeah, Dayton Casey. Casey. <laughs> yeah, that rascal. Yeah, that yeah. rascal. Yeah. He tried to call me earlier tonight. Yeah. We're still good buddies. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot of fun. Yeah, he's got. He bought a place a few years ago. Oh, good. From from Dave, my partner, sold him a place Lake of the Ozarks. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So your woes at Lake of the Ozarks. Everybody's calling me. Keith Combs calling me. Oh, Where do I stay at Lake of the Ozarks? Everybody's calling me. Where do I stay at Lake of the Ozarks? Said, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> It's hard. Wow. Lake of the Ozarks is hard. I got Casey Scanlon. I got my good buddy, Don Hauser, who's been a big impact. Dude's built over 600 homes at Fort Leonard Wood in my market. And he sold every one of them through my office since 2006. That's a good partner. That's a good partner. Yes. This dude is dynamite. And he owns a house at Lake of the Ozarks. And my business partner moved from Waynesville to Lake of the Ozarks and has that. So I got three options of staying. Yeah, yeah. So I, I always got a place You're covered. Good. I'm good. <laughs> awesome. And guess what? When they come this way, they got a place too. That's legit. Yep. And all you guys have a place if you guys come this way. Look him up, seriously. Like, yeah. what'd you say? Seven bedroom home? Yeah. Seven bedroom yep. home Both currently. And then the new one would be twin, seven as well. One. Yeah. One's going to be a thousand a night and the, and the newer one's going to be 1500 a yeah. night. That ain't bad. And parking galore and a lot of covered oh, parking. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. And it's all secluded back there. Yep. It's beautiful. It's gated, but we don't close the gate. No, we yeah. just shoot you. Yeah. <laughs> you do shoot shit in the backyard, we don't do. you? Yeah, you let we the do. AR rip back there yeah, every now and then. Let yeah. her go. Let Very her go. Cool. America. Yeah. Guys, oh, it. hey, Black Rain Ordinance. Yeah. Big time in Bass Pro Shops. Oh, really? Oh, really? Which oh, cool. Black Rain is. Uh, we're we're going to be in the shop tomorrow. Are they local? Check their, they Rain? are. Neosho, Missouri. Yeah. Really close to Grand Lake. Yeah. Real close to Joplin. Okay. Uh, but Black Rain Ordnance inside Bass Pro sell a lot of ARs for Black Rain Ordnance. Nice. But I saw you were doing a giveaway on a on a on a rifle. Yeah, they and made then, one, and then you shortly thereafter got like hacked or like Band. nuked on social. Yeah. And I yeah. thought it was because of that, but no, it wasn't. No, it was I a just random got thing. straight up somebody straight up. What happened is I got an email, and, and you uh, clicked the link. Oh, it was a blue check mark email, oh, like, bro. And, it, and it had my face on it, and it looked real as all get out and i'm clicking serious? on it and i plug in i'm like finally go get my old blue check mark you know and blah you blah blah smoked whoop, 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 oh did it shit. have you uh like log in yes oh my god yeah yeah wow dude you talk about you're lucky you got hours. it back you're yes lucky you got it back look and i'm telling you uh wake x wake x is a company that helps you with your social media pages they are not a recovery company uh, but Andy Felix at WakeX got his number, got a hold of him, and says, We're we can't guarantee anything. We'll give it a shot. We've seen this before. In like twelve hours, they had my they got it back. Got it wow. back. Interesting. I'm like forty eight hours there. I'm like, you talk about how times have changed. Like that's your whole business. Yeah, you're issue. thinking, yeah, you're how, thinking so how did you find WakeX? Maybe it was WakeX that hacked you. And then they sent you. <laughs> then they sent you an ad, Andy? and you clicked on the ad, Ooh. and then they got you that way. Ah, let's talk about this good business that, that, idea. It is got a there. great let's business. Let's figure this one Forget out. Forget this fishing stuff. It's too hard. I'm sick. Fifteen hundred bucks to yeah. recover my stuff. That's yeah. what they charge. Yeah, you. but it's worth every penny of it. Of course, if you're in that position, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, because like four days later, when that happened, I had four days. I was supposed to have a major meeting. And I'm walking in there with like a hundred nothing with a hundred and twenty thousand followers. That's right. Facebook and Instagram right. combined. Right. I just lost half of it. Wow. So now I'm figuring I just lost half my leverage oh, in front man. of my my what a mess. Because you guys know as well as I do. That's a lot. Followers, the number of followers you have is a mm-hmm. big mm-hmm. impression to yeah potential know, sponsors. And then it becomes well, who's your main? people that view you what right. where's your where's demographics? your demographics yeah. demographics yeah. then that comes into play but the first thing is if you got 83 followers <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah hey thanks Next. for calling yeah. hey, well the other phone's ringing <laughs> bye <laughs> <laughs> wait i just want a pack of free words <laughs> 10 percent off 10 percent off <laughs> That's so. That's the fishing industry right there. It's so desperate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Just ten percent off uh, one bag. One that's bag. good stuff. All right. With those jokes and those laughs, man, we're uh, we're getting down to it here. You got anything else for him? You said a lot. 
Yeah. Yeah, we we touched back on on uh, some history there. You uh, you kept it clean, dude. How about that? How about I think that? a lot of people clicked on this uh this interview <laughs> thinking F this beep 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 beep. Well, I let a few out every once in well, a while. You had one, but yeah. it, it's uh, it's. I think, uh, it's, I think <laughs> possibly the fact that you haven't said a lot on this one should speak volumes. Draw your there own you conclusions. Go. There yeah, you go. You guys draw draw your own conclusions, and, and uh, yeah, I mean Watson is a guy who always speaks his mind publicly, not publicly. He always, uh, you know what you know he says about us on camera is probably the same thing he says about us behind the doors to these other people and things like that. So you're definitely a, a straight up standout guy, stand up guy. It. And, um, and, and Hey, like I said, you know, you were in our wedding and, yep. uh, matter of fact, you're like one of, you know, uh, two, three, four guys that, uh, that we still keep in touch with my, bu- day my to day. Yeah. My friends, I don't give a shit mm-hmm. where you fish. You're my friend. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When, I, when I remember uh, walking up, we've to communicated you. through yeah. all of it. You fished an open. It was the first. I think it was the first year after the split. You fished an. We fished an open uh, on Grand, I think, or maybe it was two years in. I don't know if you remember that one. And you were on the dock, and I was ha- I was having problems with the heat, and you gave me. You had um. I forget what you gave me, but it was like you were like, "Take this. This will help you." Yeah. But I remember looking it's at Molly. You. We had it. <laughs> Molly. <laughs> this guy. Charles is back there laughing. Joking. Yeah, the next thing you know, Trank's rubbing my feet. Yeah. <laughs> Mesmerized by my hair. <laughs> Sorry, uh, it's oh awesome. my, yeah. my mom's watching this one like, yeah. what's Molly? What's Molly? <laughs> Let's Google this. Um, Sounds like a nice girl. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just remember yeah. I we it was the first time we had seen each other. Yeah. And I remember just asking you, I'm like, James, you know me. And Arkansas it was when, River. It was it Arkansas yeah. River. And it Hot. was when um those yeah. meme accounts were going on. So everyone behind the scenes was saying I was Satan and I was doing this. And I wasn't. I, I really Jones. wasn't. No matter how bad I felt about MLF, I was not running an account. Yeah. And um I remember going up to you and Saying, you know me, James. You know I'm not doing that. And you looked me in the eye and you were like, I know. And I just remember just just hearing you say that. Because mm-hmm. I was like devastated. I, I, already, I knew it wasn't you. Yeah. 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 And uh, I just you've always just, you know, you don't care. Just yeah. You're all about just well, be a good human. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. And I, you know, when Gerald left and yeah. Brandon left and, and, and Gerald told me, he's like, I don't ever hear from my buddies. I was like, first off, Gerald, the phone goes both ways. He's like, I know, I know. And I, and he says, you're the only dude that still my buddy. Yeah. Everybody else looked down. Yeah. I'm like, I don't give a shit where you go fish. Yeah. Can I stay at your house when I come? To <laughs> <Jasper>? <laughs> Can I stay at the farmhouse? <laughs> We're still friends, right? Is that what you're asking? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we are friends. I need a place to stay, please. So that's the way I look at it. Yeah. I look at life, like I said earlier, it's like, if I can help you out, I'll help you out. Right. If you can help me out, you'll help me out. Mm-hmm. You know, you got some yep. waypoints you want to throw my way? <laughs> throw them my way. You know, yeah. I won't throw you some of mine. Yep. I don't care. Yep. I don't. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Let's help each other. Let's have fun with this. That's Cause, awesome. Because this, ta- it's, this is the most draining when's, business. When's yeah. the ever. last time you had fun fishing? Uh, wow. Lake Murray. Top Actually, 10. Yeah, at top 10 there. Yeah, sight fishing, having a good time. And, uh, St. Clair. And I, yeah. and I ain't, I'm not had a lick of fun since either one of those yeah. tournaments. It's just, you know, people say, yeah, oh, man, must, must be, be great. Fun. Must, must be, be fun. nice. And yeah. I, sometimes I look at people and say, I'll be honest with you. I don't like fishing. Yeah. I, I don't like Straight when I come and stress is it's, what is sometimes. It is. Yep. It's stressful. You know what the most stressful and it, it, we have a Missouri golf and fishing. You need to come fish this one fall. And I will get you the invited. bass and Bob. Thing. The bass and Bob deal. We really wanted to you do need it. To come, yeah. All right. It's a great event. A lot of great people sign up as amateurs to come and fish and bid on fishing with you. It's a great event. I got to meet. I forgot where I was even going at this. 
I, I got to meet a great dude who is a, a fishing fan of mine, drew me, and uh, – I forgot. I we, forgot. We're talking about we stressful. Were talking about being oh, stressful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're talking about uh, I, I, he paid big money to to get the fish with me. Yeah. Because the more you pay, you get like the highest bidder gets the first pick, pick. Uh, right. of, oh, okay. of all the pros. Oh, cool. It's like a draft. Yeah, yes, a yeah, draft. Yeah. And 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 Rob had picked me. I was a fourth pick, and I went for like forty eight hundred bucks. Wow. And. We're out there fishing and talking about the stress. I'm not stressed out In when that. I when I go to fish a tournament, but I am stressed out when I have to go guide somebody. Right. And that's why I don't guide. Wow. Because you because I want, want to give them a good time and put them on that's fish. It. The stress of yes. you want to make sure they enjoy it. That's their right. Day. If I go out there and I'm competing against you and it's a classic, I I it's it's this no it's did. no big yeah. deal to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I have to go out here and I need you to catch a fish and I got to put you on a fish. That's pressure. I told Rob Likens is my buddy, my new buddy. I told Rob, it's like, Rob, I'll be honest with you. I want to catch them because you paid big bucks and I want to make you happy. And I said, this is exactly why I don't guide. I said, because this kind I said, I got more pressure on me right now to perform and make you happy than I do fishing in the, in the, biggest tournament of my life wow he said i never thought about it that way but that's how i feel yeah and uh, because i want to make him happy that's just it's his you, money that's who you are man that's, that's blow my money on that's... other shit <laughs> yeah so <laughs> well good deal well, i'm have proud one. of you guys yeah this is good stuff that's yeah it's great it's yeah. uh it's good i might come into the podcasting business a little late yeah in the you, year you need you're to. the guy for I, it yeah. i'm telling you yeah. that that's what I would tell MPFL. Let's work something out, legitimate something. Yeah. You know, go get yours. But um, you're the type of person who can have conversations that keep an audience engaged. You bet. And moreover, you can get out of the person you're talking to, get them to talk to you and get something yeah. that, because that's, it's key to have two people going in a conversation, yeah. you know, and yep. And you're that guy who could do it. Got, like you, like I said, that that fish and chips tournament way back in 2010 or 11 or whatever <laughs> it was, like I felt like I had to go up. And, and being from California, I don't know anyone. Like felt like I had to, like needed to go up and introduce myself just because like you were like the guy, like you were the fat rascal, like making everyone laugh. <laughs> The whole that room. Remember rest. Crete? Yeah. Remember yeah. Crete in the yeah. meeting? We had this meeting yes. out here. Yes. Crete worked. would ask a question. Yeah. He asked a question. Crete. Yeah. I'm standing in the yeah. back. Yeah. I don't know Crete very yes. well at all. Don't at know him. At this point. Correct. Yeah. yeah. I don't know him at all. Yeah. And Crete asked a question. Yeah. And I was like, God damn. I said, that's the so stupidest stupid. question. The whole ever. room just lit up and Crete turned bright red. That's hard to do. And that's hard to do. I turned around and yeah. walked out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, people it was knew. party on. At that point, yeah. At that point, people knew. Like, yeah. that is James Watson. Yeah. That is, that that was, is amazing. That was probably my introduction into the. Yeah. Yeah. That was hilarious. <laughs> that was and Matt so Pangrak and, and Mark Jeffries would remember that. Yeah. And that's just awesome. So, all right. Last question. Thank we got to ask, uh, you know, every, every time here it's like okay so our viewers are you know uh maybe um you know maybe they are involved with a, a, a company or workplace and you know things aren't didn't work out the way they thought it would or maybe they're dealing with family problems maybe they're dealing with fines and lawsuits i don't know but give the viewers some kind of life advice whether it's dad advice whether it's hunting okay. and fishing advice just All let's right. part ways with some okay. just beautiful advice for okay. our viewers uh, uh best advice i could give anybody and i had a quite some years ago somebody was poo poo me from a television show where mm -hmm. i said if you ain't got power poles well you're 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 basically i'm just saying you're kind of handicapped yeah well some people got so offended by that well i didn't mean to be offensive i was just plugging the fact that power poles are really cool but the guys that got upset about it were guys who said i can't afford power poles so my advice to everybody out there is if you want something, go above and beyond whatever you're doing now to go get that something. Earn that something. Yeah, I don't care. Shovel snow. Yep. Mow a yard. Yep. Clean out the old lady's gutters next door. Yep. Mow Do lawns. Mow lawns. Do something because I can promise you if, if I was down and out 
I could go knock on a door and render a service of some sort and that person would be happy to pay me for it. Yep. That's it. Yep. Just take that step. That's it. Yep. That's awesome. James Watson, you're a hell of a guy. Hell of an inspiration. We will all be watching this year. And, uh, Hick, maybe you'll be you in better the be watching because yeah. I'm going to do some crazy ass shit. Yeah, I bet you are <laughs> going out with a bang. Yeah. You're not going to go. Wait, you're going to end up going in the top 10. Do you have a lawyer? The, <laughs> you have a lawyer. <laughs> I do have a lawyer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to do some crazy shit for that's fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. No, just fun. Uh, like, I, did he just do that? Yeah. That kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Because I can promise you, if I hear James Watson's on camera on live, I'm too. Tuning in this year. That's right. You All better. Right. James, thank you so thank much. You. If you guys are coming to Table Rock, look up his properties. Thank you so much. Thank dude. you. Thanks, James. You guys.